As we get set up to do our color wheel exercise, make sure that we have all of our supplies all ready to go. Tub of water, paper towels, brushes, palette with paint on it, worksheet that we'll be using in class, and I would add to that a piece of scrap paper that I'll put over here to test out my colors once we get to mixing them. The only other thing that I would add is that this is too much paint. You don't need that much paint to do these small shapes over here, so grab less. Better yet, share a palette of paint with your neighbor for this particular exercise. I do know from years of doing this that it's not fun and exciting to sit here and watch me fill a shape, so I'm going to speed that portion of it up, but I do want to explain a couple of things. Notice that your primary colors are in squares over here. Your primary colors are the colors that cannot be mixed from other things. Uh, the hue that we want there, or the pure color that we want, um, is listed next to the squares, and it's also listed up here in the corner. Um, next, we'll get into the secondary colors. The secondary colors are what you get when you mix, quote unquote, equal portions of two primary colors. So if I mix blue and red, I will get violet. If I mix red and yellow, I get orange. And if I mix yellow and blue, I will get green. Your secondary colors on this particular worksheet are denoted by circles. They are also labeled and they're listed for you up here in the corner as well. Next, we'll get a tertiary color. A tertiary color is a mixture of a primary and a secondary color. So we have red as our primary, violet as our secondary gives us red-violet. If we take blue as a primary color, mix it with green as a secondary color, we get blue-green. Now, these are all abbreviated here. If you can't tell that RO means red-orange, you know, just, just come ask. I, I'm happy to explain that to you. So I'm gonna start with my three primary colors and we will go from there. We want to keep the same basics in mind as we begin painting, such as not letting the paint get thick or chunky, but making sure that it is opaque, making sure that we paint away from ourselves, and getting a nice clean line and edge. Smoothing this out here. I'll turn my worksheet around so that it's easy for me to fill these shapes and make them look good. So now that I have red done, I'm gonna grab some blue. I, I will take the time to note here that I made sure to clean out my brush well. I also made sure to, a little bit too much here, so I'll wipe that off. I also made sure to make sure that my brush was dry so that I don't have sloppy, loose, wet paint. Now on to my third primary color, yellow. As we get into painting our secondary colors here, violet, orange, and green, you don't even have to mix them. They're in the bottles over on the counter, so you're welcome. I'm gonna speed this up and go fairly quickly, keeping in mind, opaque, smooth, consistent paint application, not watery, in between layers, and go. Now that we're moving on to our tertiary colors, such as yellow-green, blue-green, yellow-orange, etc. In theory, this is equal parts primary and equal parts secondary. But what you'll notice is that green is a lot stronger color than yellow, 
So I'll probably need a little bit more yellow than green. Um, the rest of them, you know, violet and red, it's pretty equal amounts. You should be able to see both colors in the mixture and it's especially important here to make sure that you're cleaning out your brush and you're keeping your brush dry in between color mixes. So let's do it. You also want to make sure that you are keeping your paint mixture homogeneous. So mixed throughout and consistent and the same throughout. I can already tell that this yellow green is pretty thin very likely that I'm going to have to allow it to dry and do a second coat, but I won't make you sit through and wait for that. And here we have an end product. I will note that I did go back and uh, do a second coat on the yellow green and the yellow orange. They're pretty faint colors because of the amount of yellow that is in there. But this is what your color wheel should look like. Now, what I need to do is make sure that I go clean up my mess. I have a palette. I have some paper towels, I have some brushes over here, I have my water. I need to go make sure that I follow the same directions as before and get that organized and clean up, cleaned up and put away appropriately.